Many people in history have tried to refute the fact of having a leader whose age did not exceed 10 years old. A leader or a child of such an age might sound very controversial. How can the people be ruled by a young boy who does not possess any experience in life or sociological matters? This may sound accurate for any ordinary child, yet the same is not true when it comes to the house of divine authority. For this reason, we have dedicated this program to share and discuss the life of our second youngest Imam, Imam Muhammad Al Jawad, peace be upon him. Respected viewers, brothers, and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be with you wherever you are. Before I begin the program, I would like to congratulate all the Muslim Ummah, the Ahlul Bayt, and Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance for entering the days of the birth anniversary of our beloved ninth Imam, the 11th infallible, the ninth vicegerent of Allah, the Almighty, Imam Muhammad Al Jawad. For this reason, I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant the wishes of all the lovers of Ahlul Bayt on this blessed occasion. For this reason, and as I mentioned, we, we are going to discuss the life of Imam Muhammad Al Jawad. I am honored to host this program with my dear guest, uh, Sayyid Ja'far Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for, for coming tonight. Uh, Sayyidna, if you want to talk about the biography of Imam Muhammad Al Jawad, we know that born on the 10th uh, of Rajab in the holy city of Medina, Imam Muhammad Al Jawad is the only son to Imam Ali Al Rada. Um, he was born when Imam Rada was 45 years old. There's a story that goes along with this is that his brother got very angry uh, and Imam Rada was you know, constantly being ridiculed for not having or for not bearing any children. When Imam Muhammad Al Jawad was born, one of his brothers, I can't remember his name, got mad because he, he, he's not, he wasn't going to be the one inheriting uh, the Imama and you know, the properties of Imama from uh, Imam Ali Rada um, and an, an expert in ancestry uh, came and exposed all of this that saying that this wasn't the child of Imam uh, Ali Rada alayhi salam. but uh, aside of this can you share the biography of Imam Muhammad Al Jawad alayhi salam? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين الإمام الجواد عليه السلام is our ninth imam the ninth imam of أهل البيت عليهم السلام who was born in ninety in one hundred ninety five of الهجرة in مدينة as you have said to Al Imam Al Rida alayhi salam. His mother name is Khayzran, mm -hmm. which is called in Arabic Umm Walid. Basically, it is the maid that uh, once uh, bears a child and gives birth, she also will be considered to be free. The title is given as Umm Walid. The Imam alayhi salam, there are two features about Al Imam Al Jawad alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. Number one, he was the first Imam out of the 12, that he reached the position of imama at an age less than the puberty, mm -hmm. the maturity, which was at age seven or eight years old. We know that three of our imams, al-imam al-jawad alayhi salam, al-imam al-hadi, and al-imam al-hujjat ibn al-hasan al-mahdi, ajal Allah ta'ala faraja, those are the three imams who have reached the position of imama while they are so-called child, mm -hmm. at the level of childhood. Yes. The Imam had two migrations. Once when he did the burial, pro the burial procedure for the, his, um, the martyred Imam, Al -imam mm -hmm. uh, father, martyred father, mm -hmm. Al Imam Rada alayhi salam in yes. Khurasan. He went to Khurasan and then after he finished the uh, burial uh, ceremonies, stayed for, uh, there for a while. Mm -hmm. Then he returned back to Medina. And then again, he was summoned by the Mu'tasim, the brother of the Khalifa al-Abbasi al uh, al al-Ma'moon, to Baghdad. And where his life ended by being martyr again uh, through his wife, uh, Umm al-Fadl, which was the, who was the daughter of oh, Al-Ma'mun yes. in the year 220 of uh, Hijrah. 
basically the Imam, as I said, has two features. Number one, he was the first Imam to reach the level of Imam mm -hmm. when he was child. And second, he was the youngest Imam. He only lived 25 years of age. His life span only were 25 yes. years. However, in these only 25 years, he has produced so much yes. that ordinary people, even scholars, scientists, could not even do in, in their, their own you know, ordinary life span. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's uh, interestingly mentioned um, by al Kunaini in his Kafi that the brightness and most outstanding phase uh, of his nature and character were to show hospitality and politeness to all without discrimination. We know that about Imam Muhammad al-Jawad To help the needy, to observe equality under all circumstances, to live a simple life, to help the orphans, the poor, and the homeless, to teach those interested in the acquisition of knowledge and to guide the people to the right path. I mean, all of that were the characters of Ahl Bayt and every Imam uh, did that. But there's something unique about Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. Uh, but along these attributes and characteristics of Imam Muhammad al-Jawad, uh, why was he called al-Jawad? There are several attributes for the Imam mm -hmm. He's called al-Jawad, he's called al-Taqi, He's called Al Mutawakkil. Mm -hmm. He's also called Babul Murad. For each of those attributes, there is a long story. Yes. Sometimes the this attribute or title has been designated by the Prophet, peace be upon him, yes. who has foretold Al Imam Amir Al Mu'mineen and so forth. It went through the Imams each yeah. by you know by each. They prophesied about. And him. sometimes it is it's been called by people. Mm -hmm. The people themselves called the Imam in, in that name. Yes. At any rate. Al Jawad, uh, the, the title of Al Jawad for the Imam uh, bears some significance. We need to look at the story of the Imam. You see, Al Imam Al Jawad um, was raised, and and his most of his life was spent close to the Al Khalifa Al Abbasi, the, the Abbasi Khalifa Al Ma'mun. Mm -hmm. It is narrated that Al Ma'mun used to give him one million dinar. One million dinar, which is gold coin. That is, some narrators have, have indicated that. It's a lot. Of course, it's a lot. Very. Of course, the imam doesn't spend it on himself. Definitely. So basically, with these money, he has outreached everybody, mm -hmm. every single person, anyone who would come, any entity would come and ask for help. Yes. The imam would provide him. Now there is, we should also differentiate between the words and the adjectives. In Arabic, generous means kareem. Mm -hmm. Jawad also indicates generosity, Kareem. but then there is a different level. The Arabic scholars say that Al Jawad is the generous that he take the initiatives. He doesn't wait for the beggar or for the one who's in need to come and ask his need. Rather, before they ask, before they even think of asking the Imam, the Imam is the one who advances toward them and help them so he reached the highest level of generosity absolutely wow. without you even saying without wow. even the person mentions that oh, or no. keeps in mind this indicates the meaning of jawad yes now the imam alayhi salam throughout his life mm -hmm. he used to support bani hashim all the clan of bani hashim in in khurasan there used to be many followers of ahl al-bayt that he used to support them yes he also used to support ordinary people that even don't share him the same ideology yes. that he does, or the Shia of Ahl al -Bayt. That's why he earned this title, Al Jawad, very, you know, very earnestly. And there is a beautiful word of the Imam salam that you can see that this is not only a discipline, rather it's a vision. Here is a word of the Imam salam that I would like to share it with you. The Imam says, Inna Allah Ta'ala khalaqa Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm sorry. I think this is another one that I'm trying to sorry. get to. Yes. Um, the one, um, if if you just allow me one second. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. By, by by mistake, I just pulled uh, uh, another another hadith. Here, mm -hmm. here it is. Yes. It says, "Ahl al-Ma'roof ila istinaahi ahwaj min ahl al-hajat ilayh." People who do good, Ahl al-Ma'roof, they in need of doing such thing more than those who receive it. If wow. you have a beggar, here, here is what the Imam is saying. If a beggar comes and asks for help, 
you, the helper, need this help to provide this help more than the bigger that he needs your help. Allah. Then he elaborates. Why is it so? He said, لِأَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرَهُ وَفَخْرَهُ وَذِكْرَهُ Number one, they will earn the reward of it. Second, this is a pride. This is type of a pride that everybody should be proud of himself yes. when they help others. Mm -hmm, definitely. And third, وَذِكْرَهُ You will build the legacy. 100 years from now, 50 years from now, when people try to memorize you, and, and remember you, they remember you for those good things that you used to do Definitely. toward the others. Definitely. Then he says, فَمَهْمَ اصْطَنَعَ الرَّجُلْ مِنْ مَعْرُوفِ Whatever kindness that person does to others, فَإِنَّهُ يَبْتَدُؤُ فِيهِ بِنَفْسِهِ mm -hmm. In fact, he's, benefit, he's number one that is benefiting from this ma'ruf, yes. from this good thing. This is a vision, uh, Brother Ahmed. You see, sometimes people pay out of their generosity. Yes. Because they are generous, mm -hmm. they help others. This is mm -hmm. mostly a discipline. Definitely. The Imam is even going beyond the level of beyond discipline. Beyond that level, It yes. is not only that I am helping because I am a generous, mm -hmm. rather I would like to breed a culture of, of generosity. Wow. That can, everybody can see the beauty of generosity. Sometimes when we help others for a return, we're looking for something in return. Mm -hmm. The Imam alayhi salam says that this return could be obvious. Sometimes you will receive it in this life. And sometimes it is not obvious to you. But definitely is being put in your account in the here definitely, after. Definitely. See the, 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 the level of the wisdom of this. When you take, how would I, I, I need to, to elaborate a little bit definitely, on Definitely, if you can, please. When you have... When you have a child, yes, five years old, four years old the child, mm. you give him a candy or you give him one hundred dollar bill. Mm -hmm. Which one he would enjoy the most? <laughs> the candy, of course. The candy. Yeah. He loves the candy. Why? Because this is tangible, immediate, only appealing to his, you know, shallow senses. But in fact, this candy with this one hundred dollar bill, he can buy tons of these candies yeah but he he doesn't appreciate this 100 dollar bill why because it is not right tangible to him the imam alayhi salam is navigating through the the matters in a in a deep fashion mm -hmm. showing that maybe you help but don't consider yourself that you are doing somebody else as a favor in fact the favor is returned to you but when do you get to appreciate that is in the hereafter. Definitely. In the hereafter, when you see the rewards are multiplying a lot. Maybe you don't feel it here. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell a guy, I will do a business with you. Mm -hmm. You put $100, then this by the end of the month becomes $200. Mm -hmm. Either you take this or I want one night of worship for you, that you just spend it in worship. He would probably choose the first choice. The Why? Because he, not, he needs the $200. Yeah. But he's not very mindful of that night that God would equate it to 1,000 month. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. What kind of business that gives you thousands upon thousands of return? And, and folds in return. When do we get to grasp this? When our thoughts are elevated. Definitely. When we can see the whole picture. At that time, we, real, we realize that how much fortunate we are when we do a good thing. Definitely. The Imam emphasized on this fact, that when you do something nice, something good to others, the first beneficiary is yourself, before others, before this beggar, or before this cause, or before this school. Definitely. And that's the essence of Jawad. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, alongside from that, I mean, Imam al Jawad السلام, was only eight years old. I mean, what you just discussed right there, he began his generosity, his extreme generosity, if you will, at a, such a young age that people, you know, doubted that that was the Imam. I mean, at the tender uh, age of eight, uh, it's no apparent that, you know, uh, no cause or means 
that would lead such a young boy to become the imam. You know, any ordinary child wouldn't be able. But yet, we do find, I mean, yes, he did come from the house of revelation, the house of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But alongside that, uh, Imam Al-Jawad Alayhi Salam, at the age of eight, he did not just be a child who played with the other children. He debated with high scholars. He debated with people that, you know, n no ordinary old man, you know, uh, w was, you know, able enough to discuss matters that were, were not even able to, for him to discuss, you know, at such a young age. But if we want to discuss how the Imam became uh, an actual Imam, you know what I mean, uh, at the age of eight, some narrations say nine, um, how is it possible for a young boy to, be, to become uh, an Imam at that age? Uh, this needs again uh, a little bit of introduction. Some, yes. Some some couple minutes introduction for this um, topic that you raised. You see, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has sent a prophet as his messengers, mm -hmm. dispatched prophet to the humanity, mm -hmm. to human being. What is the evidence? I mean, anyone could question of the the authenticity of the message that any person bring that this is connected to the divine message or not. Mm -hmm. The Almighty Allah has supplied all prophets, messengers, with certain acts, certain deeds that becomes evidence for others. When they see, once they see these evidence, they believe that these are connected to the Almighty Allah. Now the Imam, when we say Imam, Imam is an extension of the prophethood. We know that the Prophet, peace be upon him, lived only um, with, with his own people yes. carrying the message for 23 years. Mm -hmm. 13 years were only in Mecca, which was only simple regulations, mm -hmm. only prayers. La ilaha illallah tuflihu, recitation yes. of Quran. Mm -hmm. The rest of regulations, ahkam, deeds, those all came when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was in Medina. Only for a, a span of 10 years. Yes. Definitely a huge religion, a huge message like Islam cannot be delivered within 10 years. Therefore, there must be a need for someone to succeed the Prophet to carry this message and present it to the public. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we the followers of Ahl al-Bayt believe that the Imam is the extension of the Prophet. He's, he, he's connected to the Prophet and getting the message mm -hmm. in its authenticity, in its immaculate nature, to the people. Therefore, the Imam also needs to be verified, needs to be evidence. He needs to be also be put into challenge. Yes. So people can realize <clears throat> that this man is a truly connected to yes, the Prophet. Definitely. And is truly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the Imam alayhi yes. the Imam al jawad <clears throat> When you look at the history at the time, I'm sure you and our dear viewers and everybody have heard about the Islamic golden age. Mm -hmm. We know at certain time, Islam as an empire has dominated the globe. That time that the Islam starts its advancement, especially in the field of science, astronomy, medical um, science, biology, math, literature, these, the advent of that time was at the time of the Abbasis. Yes. And it was, in fact, between Harun and Al Ma'mun al Abbasi. The historians say that the time that the House of Wisdom, Bayt al Hikmah, was erected in Baghdad. It says that the whole population at the time were knowledge seeking people. Therefore, you see that the Islamic Empire has transpassed all other cultures and Definitely. civilizations. Definitely. Why? because the majority of Muslims at that time were seeking knowledge. And not only an ordinary knowledge, advanced level of knowledge. I tell you this, this is written by a BBC correspondent. Mm -hmm. If I am not wrong, his name is, is James Montgomery or Montgomery James. I can find the, the mm -hmm. right to quote. Yes. Who says that the budget that was allocated to Bayt al-Hikmah, House of Wisdom, that Al Ma'mun appointed Hunayn ibn Ishaq, a scientist, to oversee the translations of the Latin 
and Roman books, the Greek, Roman, and basically the Latin books from their original language to Arabic. Mm -hmm. Thousands upon thousands of books have been translated into Arabic. This gentleman, the BBC correspondent, says, and this has been said in 2012, he said that the budget allocated for Beit al Hikmah at the time mm -hmm. was almost double the number of the Medical Research Council in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. in Great Britain. You know, Medical Research Council is an institute that distributes grants to all scientific fields, mm -hmm. billions upon billions of dollars and, and, and euros mm -hmm. that they spent. Now, Beit al Hikmah at the time was spending twice as much as the Medical Research Council today mm -hmm. on research in science. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that much of knowledge has been flourished. Everybody was knowledgeable enough. Mm -hmm. So in a such challenging state, an eight years old, nine years old person like Imam Al-Jawad mm -hmm. comes to put others on challenge. Similar to the words of Quran, how eloquent were the Arabs with yeah, their yeah, poetry? Yeah. Quran yeah. came to challenge their eloquence. Mm -hmm. In the same manner, that was, has happened during the time of Imam Al Jawad. Al -Jawad I mean, just to see that as well, I mean, uh, we can go into a short break and come back. I'll comment on that very quickly. But, respected viewers, uh, after the break, inshallah, we're going to discuss proofs uh, regarding. Uh, the Imam of Imam Muhammad al Jawad. That's after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> على الهادي النبي كثر صلاتك على الهادي النبي الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي يا سامع الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي صلوا على احمد ختم المرسلين وعلى ابن عمه وآل الطاهرين يعود علينا وكل الحاضرين نحتفل كل عام ميلاد النبي نحتفل كل عام ميلاد النبي الصوت صل على النبي أول محمد وابن علي علي سام الصوت صل على النبي أول محمد وابن عم علي عرج نبينا لعد سابع سما شاهد الجنات وهلهم نعمة شاهد النيران بهلهم ضرمة تحرق الظلمة وعلي وآل النبي تحرق الظلمة وعلي وآل النبي صل على النبي أول محمد وابن عم علي يا سام الصوت صل على النبي أول محمد وابن عم علي عرج الهادي على هدوة الليل سافر جبريل إلى هادي ودليل داس تقدم Welcome back respected viewers I uh, hope you inshallah enjoyed that short report but back to the discussion with my dear guest, I know I promised you that we're going to discuss uh, some proof uh, regarding and uh, some evidences regarding uh, the Imam of Imam Muhammad al Jawad at the age of nine. Uh, but back to the discussion with my dear guest, you'd say, Ja'far, welcome back. Hi, Sayyidina. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum. Sayyidina, before the break, uh, you gave a brief introduction uh, regarding, uh, you know, how can a boy uh, add at such a young age, nine years old or eight years old, uh, become the Imam. Uh, I know you brought some uh, narrations of Bayt al Hikmah and how you know the Arabs were, were somewhat knowledgeable at that time. Uh, it was the, the peak of Islam, if you will. Uh, all the sciences were introduced, all the uh, you know, we have mathematicians, we have you know, it was the peak of Islam, if you want to summarize it. Uh, but can you dis continue discussion of? How can a young boy become an imam at such a young age? Sure. If you look at the 
words of the Imams, mm -hmm. السلام, even the Prophet, peace be upon him. There is one thing that all 12 Imams, including the Prophet, peace be upon him, have claimed throughout mm -hmm. their history, mm -hmm. is that the Imams are chosen by the Almighty Allah. Yes. And they are the most knowledgeable entity on the face of the planet. And they are infallible. In every occasion, every single Imam would remind his followers and even the foes that he's the most knowledgeable person. Starting with Amir al muminin alayhi yes. salam, Imam Ali, that many times he used to tell his followers and companions and everybody, Saluni qabla an Ask, ask me, me before you ask me, challenge me, put me to challenge so you can see the proof. So the proof of the Imam, the proof of the infallibility could be seen by the amount of knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt This is number one. Second, the Imams would emphasize on this fact that age is irrelevant to them. You can ask anyone who's the Imam, whether he's a five years old person or 15 years old or 40 years old or 69 years old. All of the Imams give you the same answer. What does that tell you? The mode of receiving knowledge that the Imams used to get is completely different than the mode of getting the knowledge where ordinary people like us get. The difference is how. You choose a scientist. You choose a thinker, a scholar. Look at the early stages where he start to proliferate and write and become an author mm -hmm. until the last stage where he produced them all. For example, choose, choose Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. At the beginning, mm -hmm. he used to come up with different hypotheses. Yeah. Sometimes they would hit the targets and sometimes they would miss. They would miss. By time, fine-tuning start until he reached the ultimate position mm -hmm. with his own relativity theory that mm -hmm. he came up with. Take any literary, take any thinker. When you look at the style and the content of his knowledge, you see it's, it's, it's reaching perfection by age, by time, mm -hmm. except the Imams. Look at their words when they are child, look at their words when they are adults, look at their, their words when they are at the last stage of their lives. Mm -hmm. You see it's only a, it's you know, constant. A, a constant line. Look at Nahj al-Balagha, for example. Magnificent. Over 30 years, the Imam السلام, is giving his short sermons, letters, and words of wisdom. Look at the beginning and look at the end and look at the middle, you'll see they're all constant. At what level? What does that tell you? That the mode of knowledge that the Imams used to get is completely different from the public. And second, is age independent. Meaning that it has nothing to do with their ages, whether they are small mm -hmm. or they are big, whether they are adult or children. Mm -hmm. I mean, knowledge comes to them at constant rate. I mean, because uh, the Imams have uh, knowledge of the unseen, but overlooking that, I mean, they have been uh, witness to that from the enemies. I mean, the enemies of Ahl Bayt, for example, will take Yazid, may Allah curse him. He says, Kabiruhum la yuqas. They're old ones, their elders are incomparable, and their young ones are like a burning coal that you cannot stumble upon. Absolutely. So we, we, we do find that whether they are old or young, Ahl Bayt are still similar. You know what I mean? Even on the day of Ashura, mm -hmm. when Imam Hussein asked, the army of Ibn Ziyad to feed water to his little infant, Abdullah al mm -hmm. Their words is killed this infant. Why? Because this infant to them, to the eye of enemy, is as troublemaking as Imam Hussein himself. Because age is irrelevant. In irrelevant to Bayt, now what the Imam used to invite the opponents always, to put them to test. Mm -hmm. It would have been very easy for governments especially at the time of Abbasis, where, where, where knowledge has flourished, where there used to be hundreds upon hundreds of scientists and scholars and judges and jurists, they could take the challenge 
and they bring the imams in public deba debates and ask them to difficult questions. Yeah. When they cannot answer, then they will be exposed. Definitely. They will be discredited. Definitely. In fact, the governments did. But what happened is that they failed. They failed. As the story with Imam al Jawad, a boy at age of nine years old. Yes, the famous story. At the court of Al Ma'moon, yes. sitting there, mm -hmm. where Banu al Abbas came to Al Ma'moon complaining that why you have brought such a young child and you have given him so much respect and attention. And he's basically our enemy you know Bani Hashim or the Imams of Bani Hashim in the eyes of Bani uh, Abbas were Our their enemies. competitors they yeah. were they, they, they were jeopardizing their their core they were jeopardizing their positions mm -hmm. therefore they would look at the Imam as their enemy yes so they ask al Ma'mun, why what is the significance of this boy that you have brought him and 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 you have signified him so much mm -hmm. Ma'mun told him ask him simple bring the most knowledgeable person in town and let put him to challenge and find out they brought they brought the grand jurist like the supreme justice in town a man called Yahya ibn Aktham Qadhi al-Qudat he was a judge he came in front of al-Ma'moon started asking al-Imam al-Jawad a single question only a single question he asked him Yabn Rasulillah ما تقول في محرم قتل صيدا. What is your answer for someone who is in a state of ihram? You know the ihram is when yes. when when we go the to the rituals of Hajj. When we participate in in the rituals of Hajj, we enter the state of ihram. Yes. There are twenty five things that are forbidden. That we we it's basically a sanctuary. Yeah. That we need to observe while we are in state of ihram. He asks a simple question. Now look at the wisdom, the astuteness, and the, the genius status of the Imam. Well, the Imam could have given him the answer. Mm -hmm. He could give many answers and all of those answers could fit the questions. He gave him. But the Imam put the man into challenge. He told him, is that so? Only with a single question, you need to elaborate. You need to tell me if this man was in the state of Ihram for Hajj or for Umrah whether the catch, the prey, was, was large or small, whether it was a bird or mammalian, was it at night or during the day? Did he really mean it or he um, didn't Mistakenly mean it? Or by mistake, he, 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 he asked him basically 25 questions. Wow. Each of those questions, there are branches that can be derived from a single question. The of course, the man was stammered. He couldn't yeah. answer anything. Yeah. And that was in front of Al Ma'moon. That incident made Al Ma'moon yeah. to decide right in that moment to marry the Imam with his daughter, Umm Al Fadl. Inshallah, in the upcoming session, we will be talking about the youth and marriage and the marriage of the Imam. So, Inshallah. therefore, I leave the story to that. To that. But, but Al Ma'moon made the Imam his son in law. And the Imam accepted at age eight or nine, as Allah. we say. That was the age of the Imam. Now the Imam asked, he, he basically uh, you know, flipped the table and told Al Ma'mun, would I be able to ask this gentleman now? Of course, you know, the, the, the person was already demoralized. <laughs> um, for the, you know, a, a, as you call it, face saving, he said, um, please. Ibn Rasulullah, ask me if I know the answer, I will tell. Otherwise, I will seek your guidance. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Imam posed another question to him. Basically, he said, what would you say about someone in relation to some lady? At the beginning of the day, this lady is haram to him, meaning that alien. She's there is no connection, forbidden. But one hour later, she becomes halal, you know. Is allowed, is allowed to, right. to, to, you know, a, a, a relation that is allowed. Then later, at, at noon, became forbidden. Then during afternoon, at time of afternoon, again, she became allowed to him. Then uh, during the sunset, she became forbidden. Then after Isha prayers, she became um, halal to him and allowed and, and, and permissible to him. 
Then at midnight, she became again forbidden to him. Then at the time of dawn, she became halal to him. Wow. Of course, it's the man was, was completely lost. Not only him, all the scholars, Everyone. because um, to his credit, Al Ma'moon was very, um, you know, science loving person, mm -hmm. knowledge loving. Unlike many of Bani Abbas yeah. Khulafa, he was very pro knowledge, wisdom, and science. Mm -hmm. Therefore, his court, and instead of bring, bringing, you know, uh, hooligans and people who make, um, you know, they just want to make um, funny stuff, so he, he, he would laugh, he would bring scientists, scholars, literaries. Uh, to educate himself and to educate his court. Mm -hmm. Therefore, at that time, it wasn't only him. They were multiples of those scholars yes. sitting and listening. Mm -hmm. None of them could even answer. Mm -hmm. Now the Imam gave the answer. I mean, that's just one proof that the Imam, that that young boy, Imam Muhammad al-Jawad, was the actual Imam because people tried to refute him. They, they tried to, uh, you know, rebuttal and debate with him to see if he was actually the Imam or not. He proved right there. But before that incident, what made al Ma'mun um, attracted, attracted to the Imam is that a short story, uh, I would like to narrate it if you will, Sayyidina. Uh, once, uh, when the young Imam uh, was on his way to Baghdad, he came across uh, the, the, the Ma'mun's uh, party returning from a hunting trip. Uh, all the other children that were playing on the street, all of them ran away, except, except for the they, Imam. He stood in the middle of the street and Ma'moon asked uh, the young Imam, why did you not run away like the other children? Imam alayhi salam replied with such a, a very eloquent reply. He says, the road is wide enough for all of you to go through and neither I have sinned. So I don't know what's why the purpose behind me, you know, running with the other children. Um, and Ma'moon then asked the Imam to identify himself. After finding out and Ma'moon he asked, and Ma'moon, as you mentioned, uh, just a side note, uh, you know, it's unfortunate to admit, but yet he was the most knowledgeable Abbasids uh, from all the Abbasid uh, sure. uh, rulers. He was the most sure. knowledgeable, and that's, th that, that's weird to see that. But after finding out, he asked the Imam uh, what he had in his hand. He put something in his hand and he asked him. Imam Islam replied, he says, Allah has created tiny fish in the river. These fish are hunted by kings and the descendants of Prophet Muhammad and the vicegerents of Allah reveal that secret. Right there and then he knew that this person, he knew that this person is, you know, not... An, uh, uh, he, he's yeah, serious. He, he's serious. And that person should be the one that he needs to get close to him. Because as we've seen with his father, al Ma'mun brought Imam Ali Allah close to him and then yet he killed him. So he, he tries to get close to Ahlul Bayt he has one intention in mind, which I'll, inshallah, narrate uh, in, in, in the upcoming uh, time or next episode. But what is another proof for the Imam of Imam Muhammad al-Jawad? You see, when you look at the, the way that the Imam alayhi salam mm -hmm. posed the questions and gave the answers, you could see that it is out of ordinary. Mm -hmm. It is not, it is, it's basically we call it thinking outside of the box. Where you take a hole and you chop it off into pieces. And you can see those little pieces into the, in relation to that big, you know, big complete hole. Yes. That is a sign of a genius. That's a sign of somebody who's thinking extraordinary that ordinary people cannot see, mm -hmm. cannot visualize. Yes. When you see something far east and connected to far west in such a beautiful manner, yeah. it means that you have seen the entire picture, that nothing has going away from, uh, hidden from you. Basically, you are so yeah, basically, focused. He has the knowledge of the unseen. Now, when the Ma'mun posed this question, mm -hmm. what is in my hand, the Imam, at that age, when he smiled and told him that, you know, God makes, as you have said, mm -hmm. makes fish in such small fish in the sea. And then the, the, the eagle goes and grabs the fish and bring it to you. So you put me to test. What you have in your hand is a fish. As you have said, he's telling the unseen. Yes. Things that ordinary people have Cannot no idea do. about. Yes. Now, is that called ilm al-ghayb? 
Is that what we call the knowing of the absentia? Or this knowing is coming from, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in way or another. Our ulama says that Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam when they know this world of unseen, basically they have acquired it from the Prophet, peace be upon him, who have taken it from the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Almighty is the only one who knows the knowledge of absentia or the knowledge of unseen that we call it Alim al Ghayb. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes when he finds the right representative, the good person, he gives him a glimpse, a glimpse of things that can be see can be seen in the future. Mm -hmm. And a glimpse that can be that have been have been happened that, that have taken place in the past that others don't know about. Don't know For example, about. the wife of Imam Hussein the uh, Shah Zanan, for example, the daughter of 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 um, of the um, Kisra, yeah. of the king, the, the Persian king, when she was abroad to Medina, the Imam alayhi salam told her stories about herself when she was young, at wow. an early age. Nobody has even knew about that. She has not even told anyone, let alone Imam Ali about it. Where did he get this knowledge? From the knowledge that the Prophet has given him. The Imam alayhi salam says, from on, Allah the, subhanahu wa on, the, on the last day mm -hmm. of the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, عَلَّمَنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَلْفُ بَابٍ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ يُفْتَحُ لِي مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ أَلْفُ بَابٍ The Prophet, peace be upon him, has taught me thousand gates of knowledge. From each gate, one thousand gates open. That much diversity mm -hmm. in knowledge, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has given the Imam. And of course, the Imam, in turn, he gave it to his children. And his mm -hmm. children have passed it to their grandchildren yes. until it got it to, to the Imam, alayhi salam. Now, the scholars say this type of knowledge is completely different than the type of knowledge that we receive. Number yes. one, we receive this in, in an acquired form. We acquire the no knowledge over a long span of time and we keep it in the mind mm -hmm. but the imam alayhi salam his knowledge not only rests in the mind also rests in the heart that's why he doesn't forget that's why he doesn't you know um, be become absent uh, mm -hmm. uh, from him always this is vivid to him why mm -hmm. because it's laid in his heart do we have a few minutes or we are uh, short we, of time yeah, yeah go ahead we have about uh, two, two one or two minutes I will give you an example. Yes. Sometimes when you take a piece of information, yes. by time we may keep it or we may lose it. Mm -hmm. Why do we lose it? Because it's right here in the brain and, you know, other new information, information over overlaps and, and yeah. take over and kick mm -hmm. the old information away. But when it's as a feeling and inside the heart, it never goes away. Do we forget that we are hungry? Nobody wants. Nobody Do we forget them. that we are thirsty? No. Why? Because this is a feeling. It's not only the brain. Yes. The entire body feels the state of hungry, the state of hunger, the state of thirst. The same thing for the Imam. His knowledge is disseminated throughout his entire body. Therefore, therefore his entire body feels that piece of information. And that piece of information keeps him away from sin. You know, some critics, they tell you, how is the Imam is ma'asum, is infallible? It's like an, an Im immunization shot that he will get wow. and he becomes immune to the sin. No, mm -hmm. he becomes immune to the sin, not by an immunization shot, rather by his knowledge. Because his knowledge is so vivid, so clear to him that he can see the consequences of sins. Yes. The, the repercussions of sin, if, 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 if something happened, if he does such mistake, then what are the grave consequences yes. after that? Because that's very tangible to him. To us, it's not tangible. We don't feel the consequences of the sin. Therefore, we forget and we commit sins over and over and over. But when we reach that level, which is the level of yaqeen, certainty, meaning that we see the evidence, we see the result of our sins as I can see you now and you see me. If we get to that point that we see the result of the sins, 
we abstain from sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Takathur, Al-Hakum Al-Takathur, Hatta Zurtum Al-Maqabir, Kalla Sawfa Ta'lamun, Thumma Kalla Sawfa Ta'lamun, Kalla Law Ta'lamun Ilm Al-Yaqeen, then what does it say? Latarawunna Al-Jaheen. What does it mean, Tarawunna Al-Jaheen? Meaning, if you reach certainty, that level of certainty, you will see the hellfire. Not in the hereafter, in this life. In this life, in this life you will see the hellfire. So whoever reaches certainty through his knowledge from this strong spirit that he will have, he will see the consequences mm -hmm. and the result of the sins. Therefore, he becomes abstain. Mm -hmm. Then he, he, he abstains from sin. Yes. And that's what the Imams used to do. Definitely. I mean, when we do look at the life of the Imams, we do find them uh, having and possessing uh, divine knowledge of the unseen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I would like to thank you, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you on this auspicious occasion uh respected viewers thank you very much for tuning in tonight i mean we have began the episode with a short introduction of how can people be ruled by such a person such uh, a young person yet that person is an is not an ordinary man as we have been discussing he is imam muhammad al jawad peace be upon him so so thank you very much for tuning in tonight may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again bless you on this uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, if you didn't get the chance to view this episode, you can log into our YouTube channel or Facebook at Imam Hussain 3 TV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh.